Welcome to HeartCast, a podcast of Hospice of the Red River Valley. I'm your host, Dave Nillis. Today we're joined by Kristen Wenzel. Kristen is a, the lead grief specialist with Hospice of the Red River Valley. Kristen, it's the new year. Why is it important to create New Year's resolutions for grieving? It's important as we face the new year. It's a time for change. It's a time for us to look at what we did in the past and is there a way that we can make some differences in our life. I think resolutions are one of those things that people look at as an opportunity to make some changes and things that might benefit for us. When we look at our grief, I think it doesn't matter if your grief was just happened recently or if it had been years ago. I think any opportunity we have to look at how can we improve on the focus of where our grief is, is is a good time in the new year. Everybody's doing it. So it's kind of a, it's a good time to look at it because it is an opportunity to say, yeah, I do. There are some things I'd like to do a little bit different, or I need to continue to focus on my needs and what I can do and what I can do to help myself during this time. So I don't think there's ever a bad time to look at how can we update and change the things that we want to do in regards to our living our best life. Because I think that's what a resolution talks about is how can we live in the midst of whatever challenges that we're dealing with. And I feel like even some of those really fresh losses, you know, when you have a loss that happened a week ago or two weeks ago, you think, well, I'm not even dealing with that in any way yet. So how can I make a resolution? So I think it's it's the opportunity to always be looking at what can we do different and how can we make our lives and the lives of those around us better in this challenging time that we're facing. Kristen, what are some examples of New Year's grief resolutions? Well, one of the things that we have at Hospice of the Red River Valley is we have a a good handout that talks about New Year's resolutions for grief. And I like to look at that, and, and there are some of the ones to me that stick out. There's some real basic ones, you know, how you let it take time as it needs and those kinds of things. My favorites are I resolve to not be pressured by the shoulds. I think there's so many things that we all, well, if I did this, or I should have done that, or I could have done this. Those are all things that I do feel like it's important to focus on and take some time to think about. But I also really encourage you to then say, okay, I did the best I could in that moment, and now I'm going to stop shooting myself. And I think it's one of those things that that's sort of a cliche, but it's so very true because you can't change the past. What you can do is figure out how can I not make those same decisions in the future. So I love that one. I also love the one that talks about accepting that others may not understand my pain. And is it probable, not realistic, to expect that of them? Because I do think we have, those of us that are in the midst of grief, have a very high expectations of those around us. We need to understand that nobody knows what we're feeling unless we share that information. So the resolution in my mind is more of being more open, be more willing to tell people what you need instead of just saying, but they should know. Because unfortunately, people don't know unless they they may have an idea, but they don't know. So take this opportunity to speak you what you need. And hopefully the people around you will honor that. And if they don't, then you find the people that can. I also love to resolve to extend myself the same grace and patience I would to others. Because I think we are very good at telling and taking care of other people but not necessarily always understanding what we need ourselves and that they are doing the best they can. So give that grace to yourself and to others around you. And then my last favorite is to find a little way each day to begin to reinvest in your life in an effort to move forward towards hope and a sense of purpose. I think it's really important to look at the fact that you are still here. Your loved one died, you will never change that but you need to honor them in the best way that you can by reinvesting in your life, doing things that are important to you. What sort of support or education does Hospice of the Red River Valley offer to families who are especially hurting this time of year? 
One of the things that I think is really important to understand is the services that we offer in our grief support department are open to everyone in the community, whether you've had someone die under our service or not. So that's important to be able to know. The other thing is, is that we offer a ton of grief support groups. We have multiple grief support groups that meet every month. Our website is full of that information. We also have a monthly class that we offer that talks about all sorts of different things. It's not, they're focused on grief, but there's also some, we just finished one that was about joy. How do you find joy in the midst of grief? So there's lots of different topics. Our website is an amazing place to go and find that information. The other thing that we offer is we do offer individual support. So if you have had a loss, you can sure reach out to us and find our information. We, we don't charge for our services, so we're willing to help in any way that we can. Even sometimes just a phone call is good. Thank you for listening to HeartCast. For past episodes and more information about Hospice of the Red River Valley, visit hrrv.org.